all please stand. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, let we can do better than that. We're serving the King of King and Lord of Lords. The Holy Spirit here is here to flow. Hallelujah. We put uh, our Rise Men of God worship team here. Half of them are made up of Turning Point Fellowship worship team. Yeah. Diego, Stephanie, Pastor Al, and me. <laughs> I hope you came expecting. If we come expecting, God's going to meet us where we're at. There's been a lot of prayer for this conference. There's been a lot of prayer and standing on God's word for what he wants to do in this region. And so I know that when we get forth, I want, not I want, but God would love to have you come up to the altar and just start worshiping him. Just start pouring out your heart to God. I'm going to have uh, Pastor Mark Mendoza, who's going to be the speaker tomorrow for the men of a higher standard, is going to be here. And we're going to sing a song. <laughs> uh, I would like you to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that your word says that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you that because of Christ, we have a choice to rejoice. So today we're going to rejoice, God, because we're in God's house with God's people getting ready to praise the living and the true God. So, Father, right now we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you give the Lord a shout? I hope we're not staying behind our seats today. Where are my true worshipers of God at? I said, where are my true worshipers of God at? Let this be a celebration. Let's be a time of free worship. Amen.
We're here to worship, right? We're here to praise the King of Kings. Yes. I want to see people dancing and shouting because he's been so good to you. I know he has. Because look what he's done in my life and I know what he's done in your life. Yes. Let's give him glory.
love you, Jesus. We come alive. Hey, we come alive. We come alive. We come alive, you Jesus. We come alive, you Jesus. We come alive. Alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. the woman at the well. If you drink of me, you'll never have need of this water again. Because I'm the living water. We can hype ourselves up all we want and we can dance and we can say, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. But until you partake of him, until you actually partake of that living water and allow that to flow into your life, allow that to be the life that flows through your veins, until you allow that to happen, then you're just dancing to another song. You're just moving your feet. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive, we come alive, we come alive with you, Jesus, come alive with you, Jesus, we come alive, we come alive.
something earlier. We can dance, we can clap, but if we don't partake, then it's nothing. It's just like water. We're going to sing this song again. <laughs> because I believe that there's a breakthrough moment right now. There's always a window of opportunity where God comes and says, this is the window, jump through it. And as we sing, whatever you're facing right now, whether it's sickness, whether it's family situations, whatever you're facing, let heaven come. Don't let just the words, don't let the words just come from your mind, but let it come from the living waters. Amen. Sing with all your heart and see what God's going to do. Because there's an open window right now. The heaven has opened up the window for a breakthrough in your situation. Praise God. Let's go.
That's a sound that's coming out of Turning Point Fellowship Santa Ana. And we can't keep it to ourselves because I declare, what the Bible says, what we declare shall be established, James. We're going to declare over California, thy kingdom come, shall be done. Let's not waste it just in this vicinity, but let's declare it over California and over the White House. So go ahead and sing it, and it's over California and over the White House. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Don't stop, Alfred. You know, there's one thing that I remember. We're going to do this one thing. Before musical instruments and all the keyboards, stuff, they had the drums. And that's how the sound went from one place to another. And as Alfred prophesies on the drums, what we declared, it's going to go to the White House. It's going to go to California. Can, do you believe that? Alfred, prophesy on those drums.
feet for war, my feet for war. He trained my hands for battle, and my feet for war, my feet for war. He trained my hands for battle, and my feet for war, my feet for war. He trained my hands for battle, and my feet for war, my feet for war. He trained my hands for battle. I believe we dented, we did some things in California, and we did some things in the White House. I believe it. I don't know about you, but I believe it. I'm standing on God's word. And I believe uh, Sister Candace is going to Africa, and I believe the sound that started here tonight 
You're going to hear the same sound in Africa when you go in 10 days. Amen. Sound travels. Sound travels. It's faster than light. Praise God. You may be seated. Or is light faster than sound? Light is faster than sound. What the heck? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's so much better. Thanks, Jesus. Appreciate it. You know what's interesting, people, is that usually when uh, I, the church I used to attend, they, whenever there was a sound, everyone looks back at the sound person. <laughs> like, hey, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> you know. Praise God. Can I have my, uh, no, give me the Bible. Give me this in honor of uh, the man of God here as I. <laughs> Let, in fact, let's give the, a hand for Pastor Angel for letting us open up. <laughs> I want to share a few things. Uh, Prophet Steve Davis is going to come up, and I, I promise to cut my time short, okay? I prefer for praise and worship to go forth, and my time is, you know, just a little bit. But I want to share with you, we're going to see, receive a free will offering. There's no cost for this conference. But I want you to know what you're sowing into. Some of you uh, from Turning Point have heard me before and heard my heart. Pastor Mark knows exactly my heart. The worship team knows my heart. And... At the beginning of last year, I was praying for a rise men of God. This is our sixth year. Our sixth year. We started the first two years in 18 and 19 as one a year. And then, we, then some apostles, some wise apostles said, you need to do more. Are you kidding? I'm just barely doing one a year. You know? And so now this year, well, let me go back. So I started, I asked the Lord, what should I pray for the rise men of God? And he brought me to First Chronicles 4, 9, and 10, the prayer of Jabez. And, and you think, well, that's self-serving. I go, well, I'm praying for the rise men of God, not for me. And it says, in the, uh, it says there that he prayed that, God, you would bless me, that you would enlarge my territory, that your hand be upon me and that you keep me from evil. And the last part of the verse says, and God granted that prayer request. And you don't see all the, you don't, that's two verses, maybe three. That's all about Jabez and that's it. But there was a reason God put that there. Because he was bold enough to say, bless me, Lord. And, and Jabez, you scholars, some of you know what Jabez means to me born in sorrow, are born in pain. Could you imagine if I was, okay, tonight we're going to have prophet pain come up. Uh, you know, evangelist sorrow come up. You know, names meant something. So the study is that they probably, she probably had a hard time. Any, any moms in here had a hard time with your kids as you're birthing them? Oh, come on, you you know, okay, there's one honest woman of God right there. And you know that it was painful. And I praise God I'm a man. <laughs> I don't think I'm anything else but a man. And so she made them pain, and sometimes we're a pain. But she changed it. But yet God looked at that prayer, and he said, I will bless you. We have all heavenly blessings in, in Jesus Christ. And, that's, and, and not only that, but that you enlarge my territory. And I ask God, I go, enlarge the territory for rise men of God. Those that know us, we go to Fresno. We've been in Merced. In fact, can I have a T-shirt? And uh, if you could put that. These are the cities. Here, you, you're, you're, you can right there in front of me. Hopefully, I nearly tripped over. <laughs> um, Anaheim, Corona, Clovis, Fontana,
Fresno, Hesperia, Irvine, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Merced, Sanger, <laughs> Santa Ana, and Visalia. And this is where God has sent me, and I'm no better. I'm not no greater than you. I didn't fast for 40 days. You can tell I didn't fast for 40 days. Huh? the punchline. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> That's my wife. No, she's covered for me. But yes, we've been to these cities. And, and so at the beginning of the year, I prayed, Prophet, I prayed for expanded territory. And, and, and I waited. We had uh, September open and we waited and I waited. I didn't want, I didn't send to knock on someone's door and pass around. Hey, would you like to host us? Come on. I didn't sense that, Josie. I was just waiting on the Lord. Last month, got a call from a friend, and he said, would you like to come to Arizona? Woo. Arizona. I didn't have to pray or anything. I knew that God opened up that door. Now, the team doesn't think I, we should have gone because it's going to be 115 there, right? I'm telling the team, hey, you know what? That's ministry, <laughs> right, Diego? But they're for it. So we're going to go in September to Arizona. Amen. So we've been doing, now I just, we have, uh, by the way, we're, we're, this is promoting a rise man of God and we're, uh, for a donation of $20, it helps the ministry because there's a budget that we get. But I want you to know this. Every church we go to, we pray forward. This church, this conference has been paid for. I've already did the checks and all that other stuff that needs to be done. Uh, I, I gave the prophet an IOU. <laughs> Do you a man of God? <laughs> anyway, let me get back. Let me return. And so, going to Arizona, and as we're going to Arizona... We're excited because next month we'll be in Los Angeles. Then we'll be in Fresno in July. And August we'll be here again with uh, a right man of God and mighty men movement. Apostle A.J. Nunez is coming to bring you some men from Promise Keepers. And then we're going to Arizona. And in October we're going to Sanger up north. So each month we're on a move. So as you sow seed tonight. You're sowing to the next church. You're sowing to the men and the families in the next church. Because I believe that we are to sow. That's what the Word of God says. Sow is what you will reap. And if you're going through something, you know what? Just sow. I'm not going to get over here and say the first uh, hundred, a thousand dollars. I just sense that. That's so crazy. That's so out of order. But you give what God has asked you to give. Because the song they sing, you listen to it? Now? What is it? The lyric? Now? God is doing something now. Yes, right now. <laughs> Ooh, I love this team. God is doing something now. So as you come up, if you need an offering envelope, there's an envelope. There are rise men of God. That's where you make your check out to. And, um, and then just come up and, and as they play this song, praise God.
sound has come on, upon the body of Christ. No woe is me kind of songs, but victory songs. 
placing Jesus where he belongs, seated at the right hand of the Father. God is doing something, people. God, I, I sense it so strong in my spirit that I have to, I, it's like those uh, jockeys at the horse track, you know, they're, they're at the gate and it's like the horse is like, man, come on, let's go. I believe that's where God is. He's having the people. Let's open the gates. Let's open the gates and start running for what God has for us. Something new. A new sound. A new praise. A new anointing. A new anointing coming upon this worship team. A new anointing. A new anointing. A new anointing, Alfred. A new anointing, Enrique. A new anointing, Stephanie, Daniel, Pastor Al. A new anointing, a new sound that's coming upon this team. A new sound, Mike. A new sound's coming upon the altar. For the altar is holy. It's holy ground. This altar is holy. And a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit is going to come down. We're only holy. There's no more strange fires coming out of the altar. But only the holy of holies. Because God is bringing us in. Because the veil has been ripped from the top to the bottom. Hallelujah. coming up from your feet to your knees to your waist and the waters, the living waters of fire is going to flow out of you. For you won't preach like you used to. It may be the same word, but it'll be different because God is bringing a new, fresh anointing upon you. It's not only about new revelation. It's about a newness within our spirit. And we can say the same thing, but there's more power. There's more power. There's more fire coming upon you, Pastor Angel. For the enemy wanted to take you out, but the hand of God was upon you and said, you got not touch of his son, for he has a destiny to reveal. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost to come upon you now, in Jesus' name. I hear the voice of many waters. I hear the voice of many waters. The ancient of days. The ancient of days. Praise God. You may be seated. I, I forget uh, a couple of things, but I can. Today is their anniversary, 27 years. And I go, they were married on Cinco de Mayo. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and so the prophet, I was talking to him, he goes, well, when they think they're celebrating Cinco de Mayo, they're really celebrating their wedding anniversary. <laughs> but we want to present this from a rise man of God to you beautiful couple. Praise God, it's all yours. I was going to play a real song, real quick, real because uh, before we went into that awesome, awesome, awesome worship team, before we went into that warfare worship over over our nation, I saw, uh, <laughs> I saw a, 
a host of warriors surround this place with the swords in their hand. And the Lord would say, surely I am releasing my angels. I have not forgotten this state. I have not forgotten this nation. For I called you and I set you apart to be carriers of my gospel, says the Lord. And just and I saw the sword and, and it hit the earth. And it caused a splitting. And I saw the fire coming. And the Lord would say this day, even tonight, I am releasing a fire, a new fire from within you, says the Lord. And the winds of my spirit are blowing, are blowing just as in the day of Pentecost, a new fire, a fire of dunamis that is engulfing every one of you, says the Lord. So rise up, my warriors, and begin to decree, and begin to declare, for what you say, says the Lord, shall surely come to pass. The Lord says there is a shanking that is going to come, and even a split, says the Lord. But I do not fear, for I am in the midst of you, and I will empower you. Brands of fire, arise, arise, says the Lord of hosts. You took us into that realm. I mean, no, God is in this place. Because God is in you. But he wants to manifest through you. This is a new day. We haven't passed this way before. But what Pastor Eric's feeling is we're about to get into the greatest move of God in the history of the world. And if you're too busy watching television, or well, I mean, excuse me, television, and all those crazy things that are going on, that's going to infect you a little bit. But you got to keep your eyes on the prize of Jesus Christ. This is a new day. It's a new season. And I like the theme, uh, raised it, starting a revolution. You know, we got to revolt against the status quo, against the religious spirits. Come on, against these demonic spirits. Because we are of a kingdom, and everything that needs to be shaken is going to be shaken. Old Jerry Lee Lewis, a whole lot of shaking going on. But you know what? We are of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So when all the shaking's going around, I go by the 11th commandment, thou shalt not sweat it. But if you're going to Arizona, it's 115. I, sorry about that. <laughs> but you know, it's so powerful what God is doing in the earth. And if, if we look at the world, I don't think the world's going to get better. But we have a remnant, and they're in this house tonight. Those who will press in, those who will get to know God, those who will fall in love with Jesus and do what Jesus says, and we'll see the greatest move of God ever. You know, and, and the other one was unity. And if you look at Psalm 133, now God give me a little revelation of that. How, wait a second first. Father God, I thank you that you're in this place. We give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, you said you honor those who honor you. And we give you all the honor. And I thank you. I honor Pastor Angel. I honor Pastor Eric, Pastor Celia. I honor you for being here. And he says he honors those who honor him. So when we give him honor, guess what? He raises us up. And God is raising up an army. You know, some people just got a mentality, Armageddon out of here. But God said we to occupy until he comes. And I like that when we were warring. We weren't just beating the air. Come on, we were kicking some devil backside. And we got to fight. You know, we're not going to roll over and play dead. There's so much division in the world and in the church. Everybody biting and devouring one another. They said, be careful when you do that, you'll be consumed by one another. I want to be consumed by his presence, by his power, by his love. And then I want to dispense it. You know, and you know how you dispense it? You know how you fight? With the word. When Jesus was sent into the wilderness, by the Spirit. Come on. 
And every time the enemy came out, how did he fight? With a word. So if you don't know the word, you got a problem. I say, if your Bible's falling apart, you're probably not. Come on. But if you're not in it, if it's just sitting on a shelf, man, you got everything you need right there. And I said, are, are, are you standing on the promises or just sitting on the premises? Come on, there's a lot of promises in there. And all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. You know, so Psalm 133 goes, Behold how good and present it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil. Anybody know what the oil represents? The anointing, the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing. It doesn't break the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. You need some breakthroughs today? You need the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. And he says, so the oil comes down from the head. Who's the head of the church? Jesus. And it comes down to the beard of Aaron. To me, Aaron represents the priesthood. Now, we're all kings and priests unto our God, but there's the fivefold ministry. And so I believe when the fivefold ministry comes together in unity, then it gets on the rest of the garments, which is the rest of the body. And then it's like the dew in Zion on Mount Hermon. It covers the whole land. And that's when God commands a blessing. And so when I see this division in the church, I learned something from some people. They're in heaven now. Uh, but they said something to me one time. If you have ever have something against another man or woman of God, or anybody for that matter, let's not talk about them. Let's pray for them. Come on. You know, everybody's... I, I, open, I can open Facebook and see ministries attacking ministries, and I'm going like, what is this? Who's the accuser of the brethren? And if, you, and if you're going to be a shaker and a mover, you better have some alligator skin. Because you're going to get attacked. Or you can be like a chicken. When the rains come, you get soaking wet. And if it goes high enough, you drown. Or be like a duck. The higher the water goes, the higher you float. And they got this sort of oil on there. It's like water off a duck's back. So let them, let them throw everything at me. I don't care. You know? Because I'm going to listen to my father. And that's the other, that's the other thing. In unity, Jesus said, Jesus' prayer. You know, what, you know what the Lord's prayer is? It wasn't our Father who art in heaven. He was teaching his disciples to pray. The Lord's prayer was, Father, as I am in you and you are in me, I pray that they would be one in us, that the world would know that you sent me. And then people say, God doesn't give his glory to any man. No, no. God doesn't give his glory to just any man. Jesus said in that same chapter, Father, the glory you gave me, I give it to them. But there's for one purpose, not to go. No. It says, so the world would know there's nobody like Jesus. So the world would know. You know, you can have your dead Buddha, your dead Muhammad. You know, have you ever hear people curse? They don't curse the false. They don't say, oh, Muhammad. They don't say, oh, Buddha. They curse Jesus. They curse God. But we got to praise them. Praise him to victory. You know, I love what my wife always says. Sometimes, you go through a battle, turn on some praise and worship music. Begin worshiping God. Guess what? All that junk will go away. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. So as we praise God, we're going to see God move. You know, I like to say, don't get moved by the serpent stances. Come on. There's a devil out there, and his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to give you life. And give it to you more abundantly. And, and you know what? This next conference that you're doing is going to be greater than this one. You know why? Because you just sowed a seed into it. You know? And everything that happens there, you're a part of. And the seed keeps multiplying. I always like to say this. Giving is not a debt you owe. It's a seed you sow. And God will supernaturally make it grow. So we give everywhere we go. <laughs> and, and we're seeing the harvest too. And I just a quick story, then I get into this little message here. But we have a friend in, in she's from Louisiana, but she's living in Florida. They sold her house, but they still have property in Louisiana. And she had a job, and it was going slow, so they let her go. And I saw her post on Facebook, and I checked her out, how are you doing, sent something to her. And she said, well, I lost my job. So we sowed a seed. Well, guess what? A guy called me from Pennsylvania and told me I'm going to send you the same thing you just sent out. 
I mean, that's, that's a quick response. That's a quick return. You know, and it's not about the money. You know, it's never about the money. I tell preachers, you're in it for the money, get out. We've never charged a penny to go preach anywhere because the gospel is free. Now, if they give me something, that's fine. God's always taking care of me. This is our 30th year without working a secular job. So, and, and like I said, this is our anniversary. I got a strong woman. She's been married to me for 27 years. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Eric and Cecilia. Celia. You know, uh, wow, 27 years, and we've seen a lot. I'm just, hey, look, just a crazy guy from La Puente. Come on. You, and this can help you vis- have dreams, vision. I've been through the battles. I've been through so much. They said I should have been dead by now. I don't feel dead. Do I look dead? <laughs> but, you know, I got in a lot of trouble growing up. And I've been to Africa, Asia, Europe, Latin America, most of the United States. I said, hey, look, I'm, I'm not boasting on me. I got to boast on my father. That's God, and he's no respecter of person. Anybody ever got a desire to go someplace else? Anybody ever got a desire to go to nations? You got your passport? First things first, right? <laughs> <Get ready. laughs> That's stepping out in faith. I'm going to go. God's going to make a way. Don't just go without your pastors, okay? <laughs> you know, some people like to just jump from here to there to there. Hey, if this is your home, stay planted. You, you, the Bible says those who are planted in the house of the Lord will prosper and they'll still be flourishing in their old age. So, I mean, to me, if I lived here, I'd get planted. But you know there's been more moves of God in Southern California than any place in the history of the world. Man, if you did a little history, oh my goodness. And God is not done with California. Uh, ooh, I won't go into all the prophecies God's given me about this state. But get, I'm telling you. They, you know, there was one prophecy from Apostle Jane Hammond, and she said California's gone so far to the left, you didn't think it could go anymore, and then it went a little more. But the pendulum has reached its tipping point, and it's about to swing back to the right. So get ready. God is making ready a people, not just for the coming of the Lord, but to manifest the kingdom before he comes. And Jesus cannot come back until everything is restored. Acts 3.21 says, Jesus must be held in the heavens until the restoration of all things spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So if he's not back, everything must not be restored. You know, everybody wants the big bad escape. i got to get out of here. It's not time to get out of here. It's time to take over. i got a takeover mentality. I'm sorry. I, I'm just going to take back what the devil stolen. Can't have my family... Guess what? I mean, they've got family astray right now. Hey, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And you'll hold on to the promise until you see it. Quitters never win. Winners never quit. We got a bunch of winners here. Not quitters. Anyhow, I wanted to talk. I even shared this at church on Sunday about being led by the Spirit. How many know we have to be led by the Spirit, not by the flesh? My wife knows me after the flesh. She said, I stink. (laughs) But if you know me after the Spirit, I love Jesus. And I can sense the Spirit of God in this place. And so many people, some of you have healing anointings. Some have prophetic anointings. I mean, you all have something to give to the body of Christ. Every joint supplies. In the kingdom, there's no big I and little you. There's only one big deal. His name is Jesus. But I love my, my bishop. He oversees 5,000 churches, but some of those guys have 1,500 under them. And he said, you know, one time he said, I'm, got, I'm about to be a big shot. And his wife said, yeah, you're big and you're shot. <laughs> but he said, I don't see myself as superior or inferior to anybody. He prophesied to kings, presidents, but he said, we're all just the same. We're all the same. You know, God just raises people to do different things. And he has a five-fold ministry. You know, there's gifts of the Spirit. You know the gift of the Father? God so loved the world that He gave His only, the best gift God ever gave was Jesus. And then Jesus didn't stay. He went, so God could send another gift. 
the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we have gifts of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Spirit, but you know there's gifts from Jesus. Jesus gave gifts to men. When he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. And he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. That's a fivefold ministry. Those aren't, I don't like my pastor. Well, then, you, you know, hey, you're just rejecting the giver of the gift, not the gift. Ouch. I don't like that guy. Well, that's your problem. You're supposed to love him. <laughs> if he's a true pastor. Now, there's a lot of people out there, pastors and ministries, quitting every month. Why? Because mommy called them, daddy called them, they went to Bible school. God didn't call them. Because once you've got a call, there's no place to run to. There's no place to hide. I just, like, like Jeremiah? No, no. Yeah, it was Jeremiah. He said, man, I, I, because I, all the battles Jeremiah went through, he says, man, I just got to keep my mouth shut. I don't want to talk. I don't want to say anything. Every time I open my mouth, I get in trouble. He said, but his word was like a fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't keep silent. And if you're called, man, you can't keep your mouth shut. I said, God opened my mouth, and I haven't shut it since, and I don't intend to. And I'm speaking for the Lord. And that's what I want to do. And I want to see you all doing it. And it's an honor. It's an honor to come and serve God's people. Jesus has said, you call me Lord and Master, and so I am. But I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and lay my life down as a ransom for many. So God doesn't call you to be leader to lord it over people, but to serve people. Come on. And that's, and that's why we're here. We're here to serve. And so let me just share a little. Those, the church. How many are the church? You didn't come to church. You are the church. You came to a building to get trained and equipped to be the church. I always tell people, how do you spell church? C-H-U-R-C-H. If you take out the U-R, all you got is ch in an empty building. Because you are the church. You are. And you're supposed to be the church everywhere you go, not just on Sunday. Hello. There's a lot of people like that. I did my religious duty. And then we had to deliver you during the rest of the week. <laughs> and we got a guy in our church, I, I tease once more. I won't mention his name, but I said, we got to cast that spirit of that person out of those demons. <laughs> we have fun. I mean, no, it's fun to serve the Lord. It's a joy to serve the Lord. And you, when you give him joy, he gives you strength for the journey. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I give him joy, he gives me strength, and I keep going. I will not stop. I tell everybody I got a liver transplant almost 11 years ago, so I've been delivered and relivered. But I'm a liver, not a dyer. Come on. I've had cancer. I've had COVID. I've had skin cancer, uh, kidney failure, diabetes. Do I look dead? <laughs> Doctors wanted to send me home today, die. And my wife said, no, I'm sending him to get a new liver. I looked at her like she was in the river in Egypt, you know, denial. Denial River. <laughs> but she had a word. She had a word she heard from God. We were believing for the supernatural miracle, but God said we're going to go be the medical lab. And here I am. And I give him the honor and glory. And that's just to encourage you. Never give up. I don't care what situation you're in. He's still the healer. Just as sure as he saved you, he healed you. Okay, let me go on. Uh, the, the church, the ones that are born again, are to be spirit-filled, filled by the Spirit, born of the Spirit, led by the Spirit, and have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it or a force. Come on. He is a person and part of the Godhead and also called the Spirit of Truth. There's a lot of lies going out there these days. <laughs> but in... And, and, in John 16, 13, it says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on an authority. What he hears, he will tell you. And he, he will show you things to come. I like that. That's prophetic. 
Get a relation with the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you things to come sometime. And when I used to work in sales many years ago, I had a newspaper come out that said, you hear, read that, read that. I said, I already know that. How do you know that? It's today's headlines. I said, I read it. When? In the Bible. I said, you're nuts. No, but this Bible will tell you things to come. And people say, I don't hear from God. I say, he's talking all the time. Are you opening it? Because he wants to tell you. And then when you get downloads, it's, it's got to line up with this. You know, I like to download, decode, then unload. So let's, let's, let's go on. John 3, 1 through 5. I preached this message on Sunday because God was showing me. Now, God's giving me a crazy sense of humor. But there was a, a, a man of the Pharisees. You know, you know about the Pharisees? They're only fair, you see. <laughs> then you got the Sadducees. Oh, they're very sad, you see. But they're religious devils. Jesus' biggest problems are the religious people and politicians. Some things haven't changed. Anyhow, so this Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night. Now, here comes my crazy sense of humor. The guy was named Nicodemus. He came to Jesus by night, but, you know, they called him Nick. It was a Nick at night. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Uh, you know, you just see these kind of things in the Bible, and God has a sense of humor. You know, and God's even a poet. He said, Daniel had visions in his head while laying on his bed. I said, that kind of rhymes. And then when Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, is going to die, he turns and faces the wall, cries out to God. God tells the prophet, go back and tell him. And one translation says it like this, I heard your cry, I've seen your tears, I'll add to your days, 15 years. I go, that rhymes. God, you know, hey, do you know the first king of Israel had a dandruff problem? And it's the only place they mention shampoo in the Bible? It says King Saul was head and shoulders above the rest. <laughs> ah, see, you know, I just got this funny thing I see in the Bible sometimes. But God has a sense of humor. I'll tell you why. Every morning I get up and look in the mirror, God and I both laugh. Then I comb my hair and everything looks a little bit better. You know, and you're laughing because you do the same thing. Oh, man. But you are made in the image and likeness of God. You know, I, I went to, I, I'm a veteran. I was in the Marine Corps. But I went there recently, and they said, listen, uh, the, the nurse said, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you this new policy. These new policies are, are wacko. They said, do you consider yourself homosexual, bisexual, transsexual, or non-binary? I said, my alphabet is only M and W. That's the way God that made us. If you don't believe that, look at the equipment God gave you. It's really simple. It's not complicated. It's not bigotry. It's biology. And your DNA will still either say XX or XY. No, I don't know what they're doing. They don't know. You know what? God has sent them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. There's a lot of people out there. That are, God is not the author of confusion. A lot of people confused. But are you confused? No. No, because you're in God's house on a Friday night. Now, I know what I was doing on Friday night a long time ago. Now, and then we complain, oh, it lasted too long. And you went up at the bar all night. Out, out there dancing till the, till the, and then going to work. After you got out of there, you went out to eat, and then you went out. That never happened to me. Yeah. Now you can cast the lying spirit out, but then, you know. Okay, let me go on. So here's, a, here's Nicodemus. He comes to Jesus and I. He says, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher come from God, for no man can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Is God with you? You can do the same signs. Read John 14, 12. Jesus said you do the same thing he did. And then Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, absolutely, positively, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So that word see means to perceive, comprehend, or understand. So until you are really born again, you will never perceive, comprehend, or understand the things of God. Until you take that first step of faith, you'll never get it. And so again, people are going to argue, de debate with you. Until they do that, you're just wasting your time. You preach the good news. You tell them about it. But if they, until they give their life to Jesus, they will never figure out the things of God. They'll just be in the flesh. So he said, Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
A full grown man ain't going to happen. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You know what the water is? A natural birth. The water broke, mama, the water broke, and you were born. But then you were born a natural birth, and someone said, If you're born once, you die twice. Come on, you die a natural death when you get older, and a spiritual death. You go to hell. But if you're born twice, come on. Born of the Spirit and born of the flesh. And you know, the Bible says, first the natural, then the spiritual. So anyhow, he said, he said, most assuredly, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the, enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel when I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from, where it goes. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit. Hey, people say, I don't believe that. You show me, God, and I'll believe. Have you ever seen the wind? None of you have seen the wind. You felt the effects of it. Come on. And you don't know where it came from, where it's going. But we feel the effects of God. We feel his presence. You can get in his presence. One of the things I love, I love to do, I love to just go, God, fill me up. And just feel his presence fill me up. Because, you know, it was John the Baptist. I joke around. I, I meet with pastors every Thursday. You know, from the different denominations. Sometimes I say abominations, but I, I, you know, I, I tell the Nazarene pastor, can anything good come from the Nazarenes? We, it's in love. <laughs> and then the Baptist, I say, you know, it's a Baptist fault. I speak in tongues. I say, what? He said, yeah, it was John the Baptist that said, Jesus is going to fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> But we have, we have, I love them, you know, but some of them don't have no power. I'm not putting them down. They're full of Jesus. Everybody that accepts Jesus, it was the Holy Spirit. I love my, my, my I, I mentioned my bishop a lot of times, but he wrote a book called 70 Reasons for Speaking in Tongues. I may only know one or two, you know. But one of the, one of the demonstrations, one of the issues, Hoover Dam is a, is a dam full of water. You know, like a person full of the Holy Spirit. You can go skiing and fishing and boating and have fun. But when they open up the floodgates to that dam, water begins to push out and it begins to turn the turbines or the dynamos and it produces what? Power, electricity. So the Christians are full of the Spirit, but until you start praying in the Holy Ghost, then you start producing the power, the electricity. And God begins to use you to heal. To stuff. And you, you know what? You build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. We should be praying. I said, you can, you can speak in tongues driving down the road. Just don't close your eyes and lift your hands. But, <laughs> but, we need, but we need to be praying more in the Spirit. That's why you see dead churches. There's no power. And I'm tired of dead churches. I mean, we go to churches all the time, and they're full of people. They say, we're full gospel. But more than half the people don't. Don't speak in tongues. They're not full of the power of God. They have no power. So it's just a social club. I'm not against gathering together and loving one another and helping one. But where is the demonstration of the spirit and power? You know, so we got to get back to the first. The, the church was birthed in power. And I believe it's going out in greater power than it was birthed in. But before we go up, we got to grow up. Come on. I don't want to be feeding people bottles. They had, they had kids, they all got fed by their bottle. But when they grew up, I'm not feeding them by a bottle no more. Like I said, we got to grow up before we go up. So let me go on, let me go on, okay. So Jesus talked about it. And then Jesus was, get, hey, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, God doesn't tempt anyone. Come on. Don't say when I'm tempted, I'm tempted by God, because God does not tempt anyone with evil. But the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And they noticed, but notice the Spirit led him there, but Jesus defeated the temptations. How did he do it? Again, the Word. And the enemy knows the Word too. So I said, you know, I, I tell sometimes in our church, I said, listen, you better know this Word, because you don't know my last name, not Jones, and I got Kool-Aid in the back. You know, anybody knows about Jim Jones, a lot of people died because they followed a man because they didn't know their word. So we have to know the word, the written word and the living word. So 
though. But notice the testings. When Jesus was done, he says he came out in the spirit and his fame spread everywhere. Every time you go through a battle and you win, you come to a new level. If you never had a problem, you never know he could solve it. You can't be more than a conqueror unless there's something to conquer. You can't always triumph in Christ unless there's something to triumph over. Come on. There's battles. You're going to have battles. You're going to have struggles. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome. And we are going to overcome every obstacle that comes against us. We're going to rise and shine. That's, that's another moment we're in. Isaiah 60, rise and shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you, even though darkness may cover the earth. Hello. Gross darkness of people, my countenance is going to be seen upon you. So much so that kings shall come to the brightness of your rising. The multitude of seas representing people are going to be drawn to you. Your sons are going to come from afar. Your daughters are going to be nursed at your height. I'm telling you, the prodigals are coming home. The woke is causing awakening. That's the harvest. We don't realize it, but that's the harvest. Because they're going to see all these things don't work for me. I need something different. Everything's going to be in, I always say this, he said darkness is going to cover the earth. But God's countenance is going to be seen upon you. We're going to become radiant. I said we're going to glow in the dark. When everything's in black and white, we're going to be in living color. Come on. They're going to say, what is different about you or you or you? What is different? And they say, here, check this out. Here's a power drop. Bam. Whoa. That was Jesus. That wasn't me. That was Jesus. And they're going to go, I want what you got. I want what you got. Everything is going crazy around here. But something's different. People, I had a friend call me. A minister was one of my mentors here. And he went through some battles. And he, he called me. And he said, listen, I always see you up. I never see you down. You always have my joy and you always dispense this. What, what's your secret? I said, not that I don't go through stuff. When I'm going through battles, ah, I'm, in my, oh, I'm in my secret place, crying out and giving it all to God. You know? And after, and then, you know, you come in there like, I said, so beat up today. Come on, you start off and you go and you start praying the Holy Ghost, you start building faith. Now, okay, devil, come on, you want, you want to attack me, me and my family? I'm going to pray for 100 families. I better leave that guy alone. Come on, when the enemy comes at you, I, I like the scripture. When the enemy, he said, God, he said, sometimes they say when the enemy comes in like a flood. But no, when the enemy comes in, I like to put the comma there. Like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. So, you know, hey, if God is for you, who can be against you? My, my mentality is God is for me. Who cares who's against me? God and I are a majority. All I need is God on my side. Come on. I can't go under for going over. I can't lose for winning. God made you to be a winner, not a sinner. A saint, not an ain't. A somebody, not a nobody. Come on. I don't care where you're from, eh? The question is, where are you going? Not about where you're from, it's where you're going. And then it's like this. Hey, nothing's wrong with education, maybe these days. I think. But it's not about your education, it's about your dedication. Get soul out. Get soul on being bold. Get confident in your Jesus. It's not about proud and arrogant, it's about bold and confident. It's about when you know somebody... And you know he lives in you. Come on. Oh, my God. Pull on that anointing and take it. You know? And the same Jesus, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of you. Oh, my God. I'm still trying to grasp it being one with the Father and the Son. I, I so want that. Let me go on because Jesus is coming soon. Now, he said that 2,000, now he said that 2000 years ago. His soon and your soon aren't the same. But he is coming, and we're closer than ever before. And we know, read Matthew 24, you see the signs of the times. People can't even tease people anymore, can't even joke around. Oh, everybody, everybody's a racist. I said, just blame it on me, you know. It's all, it's all white. <laughs> and I, you know, I, hey, it really doesn't make any difference, because that's not going to offend me. 
God made me the way I am, and you don't have a problem with that, take it to God. You don't love me, then that's between you and God. And so I just tell people, don't go away, man, just go away. <laughs> you know? But you know what? I pray for them. I bless those who curse me. I pray for those who decide to use me and persecute me. Why? So I can be more like my father. If they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. But you don't have a right to get bitter. I say, don't get bitter, get better. Come on. Don't let the enemy beat you up. The devil's after me. Why he's after you? He's supposed to be under your feet. <laughs> Here's another one. The devil don't have no legs. You know why? He's been defeated. <laughs> now you're laughing, but it's serious. The, the devil is not omnipresent. He's only in one place. The ones that are bothering you are little imps and wimps. And God gave us power over all the power of the enemy and said nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt you. So you might go through some stuff, struggle, but let me tell you. Let me tell you here. I'm almost going to get done because I'm not touching my message tonight. That's a good thing. There, but this, you know, how many have heard this scripture? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. You finish the sentence. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I said, listen, when I was a lawbreaker, I'm not under the law. When I was under the law, I was always looking at my shoulder to see if the law was coming after me. But when I obey the law, I don't have to look over my shoulder. Well, we don't need the law, they say, anymore. Tithing, they, somebody, someone once said, some of these people say, tithing is part of the law. We're not under the law. I said, no, tithing was before the law. God liked it so much, he put it in the law. But you don't have to give, you don't want to. God don't need your money, he just wants your obedience. And, and he's got more. Oh, he's got so much more. It said the law, what the law could not do and it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. You know what you got to do to your flesh? Crucify it. You don't know your flesh nothing. Die to self. All right. You know, some people are so selfish that we got to learn how to be selfless. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross. Not what I want. No, it's what he wants. All I want is what he wants. And I, you know, Prophet Ken Kamen used to say, it's not what some say, it's what he say. What he say, I say. Come on, what he say, I say. Anyhow. Whew. So, Jesus fulfilled all the law. It says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So I said, we got to deal with this mind and get the mind of Christ. we got to change our stinking thinking, put some gratitude in our attitude, because your attitude determines your altitude. Come on. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, you know, and, and it says, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh. I was going to tell my flesh, shut up. You know, that, there's a guy who said, uh, there was an old Indian chief. And he used to always say, there's two dogs in me and they're always fighting. He said, which one wins? He goes, the one I feed the most. If you're feeding the flesh the most, that's what's going to rule you. If you're feeding your spirit the most, that's what's going to rule you. Your spirit man saying, go to church. The flesh going, no, I want to go to party. What you been feeding? Crucify that flesh. You know, but if you, if you build up your spirit man when that little Little voice comes in and says, let's go party. Shut up, devil. That's that. I'm done with that stuff. That's boring. You know, how long can you do the same thing? You know, if you really want the best, you get the most high. That's what you call the most high God. Why need you? Why do you need the counterfeit? Make you feel good for a moment. I said, nothing gets me higher than God. He's the most high God. And the best thing about it is free. You don't have a hangover. Come on, you're not broke, busted, and disgusted? And you never have to come down. Woo-hoo. What a high. I mean, to me, seeing one life change or one person healed or, or, or going to a nation. And, and, and I went to one nation and, you know, in Africa. They see demons big time. 
When I see a little girl shaking and see she's seeing these demons, she gets that free smile, eyes up. I said, if I came to Africa just to see you touch and change, it was worth it all. Come on. And what would it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? To God, your soul is more important than the whole world. How much value does God put on one soul? And never give up. Come on, I don't care how long it takes. God got a hold of me. God got a hold of you. Don't give up on your family. And don't curse them by saying they're this, they're that, they're that. You know, speak life. Hey, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The prodigals are coming home. And, and guess what? The blessings come on a thousand generations to those who love and serve him. So don't look at the circumstances. Don't look at what you see in the natural. Because to be a spiritual person, we have to see the invisible, hear the inaudible, dream the impossible, and embrace the eternal. Come on. Come on. This, oh, let me get, get going because, man, I told you, Jesus is coming. We are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, if you put to deed by the Spirit, you put to deed this. The, to death, the, death, the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now listen to this, everybody here. Creation is waiting and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now that's not a gender thing. All you ladies, you got to learn to become sons of God. All you men, you got to learn to become the bride of Christ. You know, you got to just fall in love with Jesus. You know, some, some places have problems with women preachers. Man, some of the best women preachers have impacted my life, and I'm so blessed. So you don't tell them, because in Christ there's neither male, female, Greek, nor Jew, bond, nor free. We're all one in Christ. God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. Don't let anybody, ladies, tell you what you can't be. Come on. He says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can prophesy. You can heal the sick. You can cast out devils. You can do it. That's what the word Nike means. Just do it. Who's got those Nikes on? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Ah. If the spirit of him who, do, who raised if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life, life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For God did not, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again. Can't walk backwards into the future. Come on. There's nothing you can do about yesterday. You can make today quality. And tomorrow and the next day. Keep going from there. Building up yourself. In your most holy faith. Here's where people get stuck sometimes. Oh, if you speak in tongues, you have to interpret. You know, there's two different things. They get, they get Acts 2 and 1 Corinthians 12 mixed up. Acts 2 is for every believer. And you build up your most holy faith. 1 Corinthians 12 is a, is a gift of tongues and interpretation where it builds up the body. One builds up your body, the other builds up the church body. And we need it. I, I believe it's, Pastor, I believe miracles are going to start breaking loose in this place like never before. People are going to come in here with incurable diseases and get cured by the power of God. It's time. It's time. We're coming into a place where God's going to do creative miracles. There's just a stirring inside of me. He said, man, God, when, when? He said, God's exposing things in 2023. 2024 is going to break loose like you've never seen. But you better make yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Get yourself in his presence. Spend time with him. You can't, you can't love someone you don't spend time with. I didn't tell my wife when I married her 27 years, I love you, and that was it. One time. She should, oh, she should know that. I, I told her once. <laughs> I, have to, I tell her several times a day. If you treat, guys, if you treat her like a thoroughbred, she won't act like a nag. If you treat him like a champ, he won't act like a chump. And then the men always take the scripture, woman, you're supposed to submit to me. But if you read the scripture before, it says submit to one another in the fear of God. And then it said, wife, submit to your husband, says unto the Lord. Well, if he's acting like the Lord, 
There's no problem submitting. But then it says, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. If you love her like Jesus loved her, he died for her. Are you willing to do that? No, I got to hang out with my friend. Ooh, something's wrong. Chill, chill, chill. Anyhow, I'm almost done. But I do preach the everlasting gospel. Some have been calling me an apostle. My wife's the epistle. Oh, okay. I can, I can be serious with a heart attack, but I don't want to give anybody one. Okay. So, check this out. We are, so, listen. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Come on, no fear. Fear knocks, faith answered, nobody was there. Okay. So you didn't receive that spirit of fear. But you received the spirit of adoption. You're adopted by God. You can be adopted by anybody because whereas we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. God's my Daddy. God's my Father. Man, I, I got the best Father in the universe. So we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we're children, then we're heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Wow. If we, indeed we suffer with him. Oh, I don't want that part. <laughs> now I joke around with marriage. I said, you know, marriage is like a three-ring circus. You got the engagement ring, the wedding ring, and the supper ring. No, just kidding. <laughs> no suffering. I've had no suffering with my wife. 27 years. I just tell everybody I'm blessed with the best and everybody else got the rest. But if you have that mentality, you have no problem. That's the best God has for you. And if you don't have one, we'll pray for the best for you. Hallelujah. He says, for I, you know, but heirs, heirs of God. What is that? Everything that belongs to God belongs to you. But he's not going to give it to you unless you're ready for it. Because he don't want it to destroy you. The gold, the silver, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. I'm an heir of God. I'm trying to grasp that. And you can't be an heir unless the testator dies. The one who left the will. He left the will. It's right here. If you don't know the will, you don't know what's in it for you. If I'm a multi-million dollars and I give your daughter all that, all that money, I'm not going to do her any good till I die. Once I'm dead, it's all hers. But she could die poor because she didn't know what was in the will. We, a lot of people die in spiritually poor because they don't know what's in the will. When you know what's in here, man, there's thousands of promises. All the promises for God and Him are, are yes and amen. There's promises. And like I tell people, are you standing on the promises or just sitting on the premises? Get in the Word. Get in the Word. Don't expect the guy at the pulpit to tell you everything. I believe that guy up there. What if he's wrong? Not everybody out there is of God. That's why you have to know him. You know, when people look at counterfeit money, they never spend time looking at counterfeit money. Bankers and stuff, they spend hours looking at the real thing. When the, and when the counterfeit comes in, they know it's over. Spend time with the real thing. When the counterfeit comes in and your liometer goes off, all these things go, boop, boop, boop. that's not God. Goodbye. I don't want that. I mean, some, we got some new people in our church. One person sends something and says, look at this. What do you think about this person? The person is saying, you know, we about altars and altars. It sounded good for a little while. And then he said, but you know all those names, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. Those aren't God's character. That's, those are altars. <laughs> don't listen to that guy. And what was the other guy? He said something, and I just, I just go, man, turn these people off. And we're listening to every, every strange wind of doctrine out there. We have to know what we believe and why we believe it. Okay. He said, I can, check this out. He said, we, we might suffer with him, but if, guess what's out? That we may glorify together. For I, considering the sufferings of this present time, not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. He said, for the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility. All creation subject to futility. 
not willing, but because of him who is subject in hope, because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors in birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the redemption, the adoption, the redemption of our body. Listen, when I received Jesus, my spirit became perfect and whole, just like God is. And then I got to work on my body and my mind constantly. The rest of my life, I'm working on it. But he said, for we were saved in this hope, but hope, hope that is seen is not hope. If you see it, you don't have to hope for it. For why does one hope for something, for, for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with perseverance. I'm hoping and I'm believing to see the greatest move of God in the history of the world. I haven't seen it, but I'm believing. Five minutes, Jesus is coming. Okay. So we have to deal, read Galatians 5, 13 through 26 about walking in the Spirit and the difference between the works of the flesh and the works of the Spirit. And then you've got to crucify those works of the flesh. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. I don't want that part. <laughs> Kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those, those who are Christ, how many belong to Jesus, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Come on, we're spirit beings, but we're not walking in the Spirit. Okay. Let us not become conceited. Come on, no big case. You know, when I was in the world, I used to say, oh, you're so conceited. I said, I'm not conceited. I'm convinced. That was pride. That's what had caused the devil to fall. Not only pride, but vanity. Okay. So, so it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for the necessary building up edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of the redemption. Let all bitterness, don't get bitter, get better. Okay? Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. First Thessalonians 5, 14 through 19, last scripture. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. Just warn them. Comfort the faint-hearted. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil. But always pursue what is good, both for yourself and all. Come on, we want the, I'm here because I want the best for you. Your pastor wants the best for you. Come on. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. You know what that means? That don't mean you're always in one place praying. That means always be prayerful, minded, always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. And everything. He didn't say for everything. You know, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. He didn't say all things are good. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. Your greatest call is to be conformed into the image of his son, to look like Jesus. So I uh, said, so do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to that which is good and abstain from every form of evil. If you're abstaining from evil, you test it, it's a good word, hold on to it. Don't give up, don't quit. The enemy hears it too. He don't want it to come to pass. Honey, come on. Let's minister to some people. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing that's here. Thank you, Lord. You want to speak to your people. And I, I pray this message has touched hearts and lives. And something in there will quicken to somebody tonight. Do we have another microphone for her? Where is Pastor Eric? Hiding in the back. No. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Is this being recorded? Okay. Okay. For the Lord is good, son and daughter. This is the hour that I have called you for such a time as this. 
I hear the Lord say, and the Lord will say to you, I am catapulting you to higher levels. And the Lord says, son and daughter, I called you to raise up an army, an army of men and women who would, who would, <laughs> who would, I just see that, who would cause my word to be so ingrained in them, so conformed to my image and likeness, to raise up a generation, to raise up an army, to raise up a people with hope and expectation, to raise up a people of faith, to raise up a people of power, to raise up a people who of anointing, who will talk and decree, that says the Lord, the people who know the word and the people who know their God. So the Lord says, son and daughter, I'm doing a quick work within you. And I'm going to surround you with an army. And I'm going to, and where I send you, I'm going to provide. The Lord said, no more will they be, be uh, the, the lack where you'll be just walking, stepping out in pray and uh, watching the money come in. But the Lord says, I'm going to provide for you even before you go. The Lord says, I'm causing men and women to give to your yeah, bosom. Uh, just as the waves come in, the Lord Lord says you've struggled but you've remained faithful and the Lord would say well done good and faithful servants for even now the Lord says because you've been my servants I'm going to release you with a power and an authority the Lord says I'm stirring up the power I'm stirring up the miraculous within you the Lord says I'm opening your eyes to see even in the heavenly realms I'm going to cause you something to bring down strongholds yes, that are in, are in the minds of those who the enemy has held captive. And the Lord says, I called you to be, to release the captives, to release the captives out of prison. And the Lord says, I'm risen, I'm, 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 uh, I'm visiting your home. Yes, in a so. new way. I'm visiting your children and I'm going to bless, says the Lord. There's a blessing and an anointing. The Lord says, I'm setting them on fire. I'm, then they're going to come up and they're going to preach the gospel for I've heard your prayers. You've been an example to them and the word is in them. And God says, I'm igniting them even now, says the Lord. So Rejoice, son and daughter, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I'm strengthening you, says the Lord. For ha, I hear the Lord say, because I'm going to cause you to run with the chariots. To bring the chariots of the enemy down, says the Lord. Raise up, son. Raise up, daughter. Raise up the army. For I'm going to, I hear the Lord say, I'm putting that general anointing upon you and you're going to walk uh, with people of renown and the Lord says yes, because Lord, you've so had a humble it. heart <laughs> I'm raising you up son and daughter Father we just seal that in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit and one other thing I was going to go somewhere else but the Lord says that apostolic anointing I'm putting on you and, and it's strengthening and encouraging the body to build up the men, the mighty men, the warriors, not the only men, but on the first night, they all come together. You brought them all together because I have a purpose in that. Because I'm going to cross-pollinate some things. Because I don't only want warrior men, but I want, <laughs> this is your backbone right here, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> One could put 1,000 to fly, two could put 10,000, she's worth nine to you. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, the Lord says, son and daughter, you have an apostolic prophetic calling to flow together as one, to flow. You might have one part, she'll have the other part, and you're seeing that going together and flowing together. And God says, I'm quickening even your mortal bodies. I'm work, doing a work inside of you. Even Celia, I'm doing a work inside of you. And he said, trust me. In Psalm 91, he said, with long life will I satisfy you. With long life will I satisfy you. And he said, because you got a work, a, a work to finish 
Both of you got a finishing job, a finishing work that God said, you asked to expand your territory, it's going to go nationwide. Not only that, you're going to have to mentor a couple people because I'm going to send it to other nations because I'm raising up a company of, of men, prophetic men, apostolic men who need to hear just the sound of the voice. You're loved, you're important, you're valuable. Get rid of the past and move into your destiny. And so, Father, I thank you, a man after your heart. I put that, that threefold anointing on David and that David had. David was prophet, priest, and king. I think he's going to walk in a kingly anointing, a prophetic anointing, <laughs> and that priestly calling to call people together to be one with you. And I bless him, and I bless his house in Jesus' name. Amen. Mike, right? Lord, thank you for Mike. I, the Lord told me there's a new sound coming from the glory realm, and you're going to tap into that realm. You know, it said Saul met a company of prophets coming down the mountain. And they were playing instruments. And the Spirit of God got on him and he began to prophesy. I'm going to tell you, part of the team you're with, there's a new sound coming. And it's not using someone else's stuff. It's getting your own stuff. It's downloading. But that's going to take time in his presence. And you know, you know who plays the instrument better than anybody? The Lord. <laughs> Because all things were created by him. But the sound is to bring people into the glory realm. And, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to be playing, people are going to get healed. They're going to be touched. They're going to be changed. And it's not because someone spoke it. It's because God will interpret the sound. If they didn't know what kind of sound it was, how would they go to war? How would they be rejoicing? That everything makes a different sound. And God says, I'm going to give you a different sound. And it's going to bring people in. They're just going to go with the flow of the Spirit when your hands are on that instrument. But guess what? He said, you're my instrument, and I'm fine-tuning you too. And sometimes you'll be playing that, and I'll download the interpretation of what you're playing, and you'll begin to prophesy. Lord, I release this prophetic mantle anointing that he will prophesy by the instrument, and he will prophesy how you'll open his mouth, and words of knowledge and words of wisdom will come, and he'll see people's life. And, and he'll receive. I release this anointing. Lord, give him a double portion anointing. He's going to need it in the days ahead. And the Lord says, don't worry what the enemy has tried. The enemy has really tried. <laughs> he's, he's, there's such a threat to his kingdom. But press in to all that I have for you. And you'll see my goodness and my glory and my power. Father, I thank you for Mike. Hallelujah. And he's got another Mike on your side called Michael. <laughs> in the archangel, he's going to fight with you. When Gabriel came to bring the message, it was Michael, you know. And Gabriel said, I, I was trying to get to you. I heard you the first day you cried out. But it took 21 days because I had to call Michael. Michael's on your side. Michael's on your side. And you will see the power of a God like never before. I release that in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, man. Love you. Okay. Are, are you... Are you... You're right. I really pray for you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> your name is? Yeah, your backbone, yes. How, your name? Dell. Dell? Well, I heard the Lord say, daughter, I'm opening you up. I just saw a, a book open, and the Lord says, I'm opening you up as a book read by all men. The, the, the Lord, for I... I am pouring in you my word. I'm pouring in a new anointing. And the Lord says those things, like so the, those things that came, I'm hearing Egypt. There were sometimes you felt like you were in Egypt and things kept coming and hitting and hitting. But the Lord says, daughter, I've now got you between uh, the Pharaoh and the Red Sea. And the Lord says, I'm going to split open the sea for you. And you are going to walk on dry land. What the enemy meant for evil, the Lord says, I'm turning around for good. And you will look back and you will see that the enemy... Uh, 
that tried to take you out was, I fought for you. I am fighting for you, daughter. And they will not overtake you because I called you, daughter, to be more than a conqueror. I called you to, um, the Lord says, the things you have gone through have been for a testimony. And the Lord says, you've gone through the wilderness and you've passed the test and you're coming out full of power, full of strength, full of might, full of anointing to destroy every yoke of the enemy. The Lord says, I'm going to bring to you those who have been bound and who are burdened. And the Lord says, I'm opening the eyes of your understanding to see to see beyond the natural. And I hear the Lord say, you're going to release other captives. You're going to re re release. There's that anointing that's on you to release those who are in prison. And, I, the, and as I saw the book open, the Lord says, there's revelation. You daughter, I called you to mind the treasures that are in my word. I'm going to cause you to go deep. I'm going to cause that word, my word, to go so deep in you. And the Lord says, I'm going to raise you to teach my word, daughter. So dig deep, dig deep, dig deep, for I'm stirring up a new thing. This is a new season for you. This is a time of refreshing, says the Lord. I'm, I'm lifting you both up. I hear the Lord say, I'm refreshing you both. So come drink, come drink of my spirit. Come drink of my water, for surely I'm going to ah, quench the thirst. I'm going to quench the thirst. And you will no longer thirst. But the Lord says, you run after me, and you ran hard. And the Lord says, well done, faithful servants. Hello. Your name, brother? Joe. Joe. Man, Joe, I saw the Lord's going to raise you up in a tremendous way. You got a heart for God. You got a heart to serve. And, and, and the enemy tried to kill you Amen. several yep. times. Yep. But he couldn't. And when you got a hold of God, you said, man, there's no looking back for me. I, got, I, got, I want this. I want to. And God says, you're going to open your mouth and I'm going to minister through you. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. You're going to go into communities with a boldness and a confidence and win people yes. to Jesus. They're going to say, how did you change? Say, I'm not the same person I used to be. And God says, I got you under my shadow. I got you under my wings. And I'm going to raise you up. He says, I thank you. Keep that servant's heart. Keep that servant's heart. That was how I raise up to be leaders. You're going to be a leader in the community. And you're going to be a leader among men. And God says, and God says, there's a scripture that says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the mansions of the wicked. Amen. And he said, God, all I want to do is please you. And God says, you do please me, son. And he said, it does not appear what we shall be, but we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. He said, I'm going to begin to give you a revelation of me even more so. Amen. So you can see me in my fullness and my glory. So you can dispense him. So you can dispense it. It's not so I can uh, look at me. I know that's not your heart. God says, I give you, a, I called you to be a man after my heart. Pursue my heart. Pursue me. And I'll add everything else to you. Amen. And you won't lack anything. God says, I'm breaking even some poverty mentality mindsets. Yes. God says, that's not who you are. You're who I say you are. Not what the enemy says. Not even the way you were raised. He said, I'm going to raise you from this day forward in a new way and a new grace. Father, I thank you, Joe. Yes. Uh, Joe, you're going to do more than ever before because God says, I cause you to soar with the eagles. I cause you to soar with the eagles. Not run with the chickens or the turkeys. I'm calling you to soar. And he said, you keep serving. You keep serving. And then you're going to reproduce yourself. And God says, I'm going to take you up to level, to level, to level, to level. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you in a tremendous way. Father, I release this anointing. I release the power of God and the ability to let old things be gone and walk into the new because there's people waiting for you on the other side of your obedience. And God says, oh, Lord, I stir up these gifts in here, the gifts of healing, the word of knowledge. I stir them up and they're going to come forward. As Paul said to Timothy, 
as he said, stir up the gift that is in you by the laying on of my hands. Because God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. No, you're going to have boldness. He's given you power, his power, his anointing. Ooh, and he's given you the mind of Christ. And you will function out of it in this next season. It's a preparation season, but you're going to flow ooh, like a mighty river. I release that in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, Monica. Love you. Let's get somebody over here. Okay. Hold on. This lady right here. Your name is? Irma. 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 Huh? It's all in Spanish. (laughs) Okay, good. So, The Lord says, daughter, you are the apple of my eye. I chose you from the foundation of the world, and I've called you, daughter. I've called you to me. And this is a season, the Lord says, where my spirit has been hovering over you. My spirit has been upon you. My spirit has been around you. My spirit has been in you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm doing a new thing. There's a refreshing that's coming to you because things have been even dry and heavy. You felt like you've been in the wilderness. But the Lord says, I've been holding your hand even through the wilderness season. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm I called you to be more than a conqueror. I called you to defeat the enemy. I hear the Lord says, uh, I'm giving you a new, it's like a mantle. I I see a mantle of peace just coming around you. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm going to reveal myself to you as Jaira like you've never known. The Lord says, I'm going to release. um, He's showing you who Jaira is. The Lord says, because I am your provider. I will take care of you. I will keep you. I will heal you. I will provide for you because you have chosen to dwell in the secret place. You have said, I... God, I want you. I want to be used by you. And the Lord says, I'm going to use you, daughter. I'm going to use you to bring comfort. I'm going to use you to bring healing to those that are around you. I'm going to use you even as you go through the market. You're going to see people, and they're going to be drawn to you because I'm making you like a lighthouse. And I'm going to put you out there just... But uh, those ships that are about to to crash, the Lord says they're going to see the light because the order, the glory of the Lord that you carry, that is in you, is going to rise. The, the, the Lord says, and people are going to come to you, and you're going to have a word for them, a word of healing. The Lord says, I'm going to cause my word to come out like not in gushes, like a geyser. It's going to come out in power. It's going to come out in strength strength and it's going to and it's going to cause it's going to cause healing it's going to cause uh, chains to fall off people and there are some in your family the lord says who are chained up and the lord says ha, daughter they've heard your preaching they've heard the word the word has been planted and the, i'm just seeing the chains fall off because the anointing that is upon that is in you cannot when they come around you, that anointing is going to break chains. You know, I'm, I'm visiting you, daughter. I've heard the, I'm, though the bondages are breaking. I'm calling them. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to speak to those you love in dreams and visions. And even you, daughter. Even you. The Lord says, I'm opening your ears to hear me. You, want, you say, Lord, I want to hear your voice. But God says, daughter, I've been speaking to you. I'm going to lead you by my spirit. You're going to, it's going to be that voice, that still small voice, but you're going to recognize it. And it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So the Lord says, spend time with me. Spend time with me. This is the key. This is the key that's going to unlock the transformation that I'm going to do within you. 
Father, we just Amen. seal this. Amen. Thank just get some people up there. Your name? Desiree. Desiree, Desiree I, I see the enemies try to put an oppression on you, try to keep you down, and try to give you a false identity. But God said, that's not who you are. You're going to find out who I say you are. You're my princess. You're my bride. And you're going to grow strong in the things of the Lord. And he said, don't let anybody put a wrong identity on you. That's not who you are. You're a strong woman of God. You're a powerful woman of God. you got to take this and get it in your spirit because the enemy just would like to keep you from not fulfilling your destiny. But you will. You're going to step into the glory realm. You're going you're gonna to see these things because the enemy will just, he does see, sometimes you don't see it. The enemy tries to keep you from it, but you have a destiny that's very powerful. You have an anointing that's very strong. But the key is getting to know him. He's the lover of your soul. He's the one that's making you whole. Don't look on the outward. God sees your heart. Don't look on what the enemy says to your mind. Cast it down. Because this is, I just, it's like I saw a crown put on your head. Like an Esther to come before the king. And he says, what do you want? Ask me. Ask me. I'll bring it to you. You just got to trust me. All those things that try to keep you down, I'm breaking the shackles. And you're going to have joy. And you're going to have peace. And you're going to have my presence. And you're going to carry it. And then you're going to help people who's going through their own battles. Because God says, I'm going to take what the enemy meant for evil. And I'm going to turn it for your good. I'm going to turn it for your good. Trust me, God. It's all about you. Trust me. Time is stay in the word. Stay in prayer. And watch what I do. I'm going to break through for you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you're worrying. I don't know. Oh, you had, yes, you. The worship. <laughs> oh, you're the worship. Yeah, okay. Um, your name, sir? Uh, I didn't hear. Tongues. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell. L. 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 Okay. Hello, what's up? I just heard, I just heard prophet. Son, I put a man, a prophetic mantle upon you. Not only are you, is it a prophetic mantle, but it's a coat of many colors because you're going to speak to different nations, says the Lord. I've called you and I'm preparing you. Um, uh, I hear the Lord say, I, I'm going to send you to nations. I'm going to cause you to hear my voice. I, I, I hear you. I hear the Lord say that when you go into nations, you're going to take such an anointing that, uh, that he's going to send you to, uh, I want to say dignitaries, but they're dignitaries and people, in, dignitaries in the church. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a word in season. You're going to go with the word. You're going to go in the strength and the power of my might. For I am with you, says the Lord. And I'm going to fill you with my word. And I'm going to fill you with an understanding of, of, of where I'm taking you. I'm going to, in the, in the nations that I take you. And I, I don't know. I just see when your feet hit the ground that, that it's going to cause a shaking because I'm putting such an anointing upon you says that you're going to demons tremble <laughs> you're going to pull down strongholds yeah, the Lord so says you're going to pull that. down strongholds for I uh, and the Lord says I'm going to open your eyes <laughs> just like Elijah and, and I hear the Lord says and I'm going to I'm going to send you out and I'm going there uh, oh I hear him say I'm sending you forth to equip to equip my body, says the Lord. Equip my body. Yeah, you're going to, oh, I see schools. Yeah. What do you see? No, I, I'm, I'm seeing a processing for this calling, a processing, a training, getting ready to move into a deeper realm. God says, you know, you, you, you got to flow, but I'm going to take you so deep that by this time next year, you're going to be a whole, like a different person. 
a whole different person. And people are going to say, who are you? Where did you come from? And you're going to say, I'm an ambassador of the Most High. And I have a word in season. You're going to have not only words for individuals, you're going to have word for different uh, cities and different places. God says, because I'm going to raise you up, not only as a prophet and speaking to people, but to nations. He said, so, but it's, here's one of the things. You want to be a prophet? He said, look at the prophets who heard from God as an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. So if you're going through some battles, it's just part of the call. Don't, don't worry. You're not going to miss it. You're going to fulfill your destiny and purpose, and you are going to speak life to many. You're going to speak life, and you're going to, ooh, I just heard this word, seer. You're going to begin to see things in people's lives and be able to bring them freedom. You're gonna, what you see, you're going to be able to say, you're just going to be the mailman. Don't try to interpret everything, figure everything out. Just give what you get, and it's going to go deep into people's hearts. Deep. It's going to totally change a lot of people, a lot, even communities. But God said the key is intimacy. Being, I like to use the word intimacy means I want you into me. See? Get totally into me. Get totally lost in my presence. Take time to spend with me and watch what I do in this next year. In this next year, everything's going to shift and everything's going to change. And he said, just, walk, just don't try to look for it. Just start walking out and do what you always do, and I'll make the way, and I'll open the doors. And I'll release that anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. This young lady right here. Man, church so boring, but God's going to get a hold of you in such a powerful way. And you're going you're to be a leader in your generation. Pe- people, your age, people your age need to hear from God. And sometimes they say, yeah, boring. Yeah, some church is boring, but you're going to be on fire. God's going to put a fire in you. You can't run this way. You can't run that way. And they say, okay, God, I surrender everything. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. But then you're going to say, man, I never knew it was so much fun, so much powerful. I should have done it sooner. <laughs> but God's preparing you for your destiny, your purpose. And he said, I'll, I'll, listen, he said, I'll, I'll dress with the best and I'll give you nothing less. He said, and I, the education, the schooling, both of you, don't worry about it. You know, I, <laughs> I'm the best teacher. <laughs> Some teachers aren't that good these days. But he said, he's going to teach you things. Both of you, the Holy Spirit's going to teach you, lead you. And uh, uh, you have a quiet spirit. But you, you can be bold and in your face if you have to be. <laughs> and so, but, you know, so you're just sitting here today. But God says, I'm going to shake you up, wake you up, stir you up. And put my fire within you. Because your generation needs to see the real deal. Not the counterfeit. You know? And there's all kinds of things trying to bombard your age group right now. He said, but you're going to know the difference between the false and the real. And Lord, I release that discerning of spirits on both of them. That gift that they will know what's of God, what's not of God. And watch out for the traps of the enemy. Because he'll try to pull you this way, that way, and the other way. And you know, even watch out for traps of those young boys. <laughs> but God... At the right time, in the right season, God will give you a helper. I said, wait a minute, the woman's supposed to be the helper. No, I can be helper too. I help my wife all the time. <laughs> but God's got a plan that's big for both of you. Big. Father, I release this anointing that destroys every plan of the enemy over their lives. And no matter, they can't go to the left or to the right. Because you're going to keep them on that straight and narrow. And they're going to be full of power, full of good works full of sharing the love of God. And Lord, they will not receive the love of the enemy and the lies of the enemy to try to get them to the left or the right. But they will flow with you in a young age. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah, when God came to him and said, son, I called you to, do, to be a prophet to the nation. He said, he said, I'm just a young, I'm a youth. He said, don't say you're a youth. Go to all who I send you. Say what I tell you to say. Do what I tell you to do. And I will be with you. And that's God's going to be with you. No place to run, no place to hide. <laughs> but get plugged in, get your word in you, and watch what God does. Are you mama? Mama, God says, I'm well pleased. You know, you fought hard. <laughs> and you're still fighting somewhere in some areas. But God says, don't, don't worry about it. I will fight for you. I got you carved in the palm of my hand. And the enemy really tried to bring you down and say, you can't be this, you can't be that, you know, because you messed up. No, hey, 
who hasn't messed up. And God says, I'm the healer. I'm the restorer. I'm the renewer. And I'll give you better than what you have. Come on. I give you better. I said, what the enemy meant for evil, I'm turning for your good. And trust me, God. Don't lean on this. This will mess you up. <laughs> God says, watch when I go deep. He says, I called you. Man, I, I see an Esther on it. And Esther could come before the king and help people get set free. I said, I'm setting you free tonight from every lie of the enemy, from the deception, from the confusion, from everything you, words, I see word curses spoken over you. People tell you all kind of things and garbage. And sometimes you just feel like you're the garbage can, but you're not. Don't let anybody put anything in you that doesn't look like God, walk like God, talk like God. And God said, watch and see what I do. Watch that. I, I got something coming for you. You're going to like it. <laughs> All that bless her in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll give one or two more. And we'll, we'll do a couple more, and then I don't want to keep you here till Jesus comes, but unless he comes in the next five minutes. <laughs> I'm going to preach tomorrow. Yeah, a double portion of <laughs> The Lord would say, son and daughter, <laughs> I'm hearing expansion, mm. multiplication, provision. <laughs> I'm hearing uh, there's, there's been a struggle with the finances, but God says, <laughs> I'm, I, the, windows here, the windows of heaven are open, son and daughter. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide. You've been faithful. And you stood no matter, you know, uh, the pressures, you, you, the pressures of the finances, uh, the pressures of the, of the sheep. <laughs> but the Lord says bad, you've been faithful. And now the, I just see blessing on blessing and yes. blessing. And, and you're walking under an open heaven. I hear the Lord's, it's the expansion. The Lord says, I'm bringing more. I'm expanding you. And the Lord says, I'm taking your faith to a new level. The, I hear the Lord say, I've got you surrounded, son and daughter. I got you surrounded uh, by, by war. I see the warring angels. And the Lord says, I got your house. And I hear the Lord say, I, I got there. I'm seeing the sun, and the Lord says, I'm bringing revelation. I'm bringing a new anointing upon you. And, and I, just see, I just see people are coming, coming in droves. The Lord says, son and daughter, uh, deliverance is going to come to your house. The, the, in your ministry, you're going to be preaching, and you're and you're and people are going to just uh, start manifesting because God, they're just going to be set free. God, the Lord yes, says, sir. this is the time and the hour that you're going to see a freedom. This is the time and the hour where you're going to see the miraculous hit. Hit. You've been saying, Lord, I want to see this, and the Lord says, it's here. It's. Amen. Here you will see blind eyes open, and your ministry will grow because of the healings that are going to be taking place. Um, do you have anything? Uh, what I was seeing is the, you know, the, the breakthrough. God's gonna give you the breakthrough in so many areas and the resources. But just a little seed there. I won't be here tomorrow, but anyhow, I want to sow personally because take her to dinner. And God said, this is just a beginning. I'm going to have men put into your bosom. Every time you sow a seed, say, God, send them in. Because that's what it says. You, when, when, you, when you give, it'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give back into your bosom. So every time you sow a seed, say, God, send them in. And that doesn't mean men. It means mankind. So finances, resources, we loose them to come to you. From the north, south, east, and west. Father God, I thank you. You have angels on assignment for them to bring them into the, the victory. And it's not, you know, your heart is not about the money, but you need money. You can't preach the gospel. You can't get on a plane and go. 
The gospel is free, but it takes money to go and travel and do. And God says, you're going to do some traveling. You're going to be some doing. And I even see, I just heard this real quick. The Lord's going to pay for you a vacation down the road. Hallelujah. He's going to pay for your vacation. Hallelujah. So funny. I got a word like that one time. And some guy called me and said, I want to take you to Florida. And I'll pay for all the expenses. So that, that was God. But I, I just heard it in my spirit. You're going to get a paid vacation. And the Lord said, you labor hard, but God says, you're going to cease from your labor and enter into my rest and everything's going to be a greater flow, a smoother flow. Not that you have to really work at it. It's just that that intimate relationship with me is what's going to cause you to flow. Both of you. Both of you. Like a river. God said, no, no ankle deep, no knee deep, no waist deep. He said, jump in over your head because I won't let you drown. I won't let you burn, but I'm going to put a fire within you that cannot be quenched and cannot be stopped. Father, I release the anointing on this couple. In the name of Jesus, you called them to be one. You called them to agree together. And as they agree as things, they're going to begin to see it. I speak growth, supernatural and numerous. <laughs> Lord, bring them from the north, south, east, and west. Eyes to see. Ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and speak it. Speak it. God says you're going to get in and speak things. And I know a minister, they would say, how do you go all over the world? He said, I have money I haven't even seen yet. Start decreeing. And it's not about, again, it's not about the money, but God says, I have more than enough. I can give millions. I can give billions. I can give cattle. I can give everything. But it's not about that. It's about seeking me. And my ways and everything else just is getting added to you. Even from this day forward, I'm adding and multiplying. I'm taking your addition and putting into multiplication. And multiplying everything you put your hand to do. So just go strong. Oh, it's a, such a pure heart. <laughs> Who can enter his presence? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who hasn't lifted his soul to an idol. And it's killing the, killing the idol self every day. <laughs> to follow through and fulfill. God says, you're like Job, your latter end will be greater than your former. And I just released that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Oh, the, the, you got a gray? Yes, you. Your name is? Ivory? Ivory. I, there's a song Steve Swanson sings, and he says, I'm going to dance like the angels dance. Holy fire consuming me. The Lord says, daughter. Holy fire, holy fire is consuming you. And the Lord says that when I'm done with you, you are going to, the fire that's shut up in your bones, I, I see you're going to preach the gospel, daughter. I see an evangelistic, uh, the Lord says, for I placed an evangelistic anointing upon you. <laughs> and I'm going to send you into the highways and the byways, full of power, anointing, full of might, full of, full of grace, says the Lord. Lord, because great grace is upon you. And I hear the Lord say that river that you that he talked about, the dam. The Lord says, as you begin to speak in tongues, as you begin to stir, the Lord says you're gonna walk in such a power that that I I, I see healings. I see you touching many lives. I, I, I'm seeing crusades in, in parks. Um, uh, you, uh, God's just going to use you. He, he, uh, God's going to use you to bring... I, I, your ministry is in... I see parks. I see projects. I, God says I'm going to put that fire in your bones and when you speak it's going to be my anointing fire and the Lord says you will see blind eyes open because that's what the evangelist walks in they walk in the miraculous so you will walk in the miraculous and the Lord says it's going to split not only at you but I see it splashing on your family because God says I'm a the Lord says I'm a covenant God and I'm a generational God and your family Family is going to preach the gospel. The Lord says, your, fa your children are, 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 
I, I've got angels around them and I'm taking care of them. And even you, because you're going to, I'm going to send you into, um, I want to call them dark places where people are afraid to go. But the Lord says, I'm putting such a Holy Ghost courage within you that I'm going to send you in, but my angels are with you, daughter. Amen. Amen. This young lady, your name? Martha, 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 you're worried in trouble about me. <laughs> yeah. But Martha, I'm going to tell you, you are a warrior. You've seen a lot. You've been around a lot. But you were, we were one that would never give up, never quit, because you trust your father. You trust your father because he's been good to you. No matter what happened, God says, I'm giving you long life, but you still got a call. You still got an anointing. You still got power in your hands and power in your mouth power in your words and you can kick devil behind you are a power force you know and the devil trembles when you wake up i mean it's like here she goes again but that's all right god said that's the way i made you and and he said you've seen the abuses you've seen the craziness you've seen the world go crazy and a lot has changed you thought it, you thought well it's going to get better and sometimes in some areas it got worse but you are one who kept your eyes on the prize. And God says, daughter, you keep praying. You keep believing. Some of your prayers that you haven't heard answered for years are going to come to pass in this new season. You know, because you just wouldn't quit. And God said, I put that in you. And you could have a thousand times. You, you probably said, I quit. But you couldn't. <laughs> you know you couldn't. Because it's in you. You are a, you're like a fireball. And God said, I'm, put, I'm restoring. I'm restoring you. And it says, uh, huh, though your beginning was small, he said, your latter end shall greatly increase. It's time. It's time. You're going to see God's glory. You're going to see God's power. But you're going to dispense it too. And God said, you're not called to just sit like a bump on a log. You know, of course, you go, you go spend your time with the Lord. He said, but now. I want you, when someone's sick, you say, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? And, and you're going to see miracles. You're going to see miracles. It's time. And I said, oh. I look at you, and I see Jesus inside of you. Powerful. Powerful. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. And you're going to step up. You're going to step up. I said, I'm going to honor you. He said, even, even that says that in Psalm 91, I will honor you with long life. I will satisfy you. And show you my salvation. That word salvation doesn't mean go to heaven when you die. That's healing, deliverance, prosperity. It's everything. And God says, I am your everything. And you made me your everything. But you are, you mean so much to my heart. I said, you're near and you're dear to me. So go strong. Bless you, Martha. Bless you, Martha. What's your name? Yeah. Yeah, you. James. James. Oh, you know, they got James the less. But he's more. <laughs> and the Lord says, James, uh, you're going to be a warrior, a devil destroyer. He said, you're going to fight the good fight. You're not going to fight with flesh and blood. Okay, you, you've been in some few <laughs> here and there. You've been in some. some but he said, listen to this. You're gonna, it's like struggle with an angel. Jacob struggled with an angel. Actually, it was a, it was, and he prevailed. And he got a, a new name. God said, I'm going to put a new name within you. And you're going to fulfill your destiny and your purpose. And uh, I see people waiting for you to speak to them, to speak life. He said, I'm going to show you my love. And my, your heart's going to beat for people that are hurt, people that are on the streets. He said, and I will also, in times to come, put the resources in your hand to be a blessing to them. He said, because I'll be able to trust you. I trust you, son. Stay planted in my house. Get filled up. And then you're, then you're going to be, the river's going to fill, you're going to get filled up, but then you're going to pour out. Because he don't want you to just be full. He wants you to get full, pour out, full, pour out, full, pour out. And, and you're going to not only speak, pray for people, you're going to lay hands on people, you're going to speak about, and you're going to begin to see issues. And God said, I'll put a spirit of wisdom and counsel on you. To, to go deep. A lot of people tell problems, tell you all their problems, but that's just the fruit. It's not the root. 
When you cut off fruit, it grows back. And God says, I'm dealing with some fruit in your life, cutting it off. Because when I cut off the old, I bring back more better. Oh, so might not make it more better. <laughs> it's going to be more better for you, you know, in the days and weeks and months ahead. So just press in. Get pl- stay plugged in. Is this your home church? Get plugged in. You're going to get trained. You're going to get equipped. And you're going to get launched. Hallelujah. Because I see, I don't see regular fuel. I see like rocket fuel. You know, don't run before your time, though. <laughs> Wait till you launch. And I'm going to tell you what. Many people will come to the kingdom because of what I'm putting on you. And it's, it's an evangelistic anointing, but it's also uh, <laughs> in your face anointing. <laughs> I just got to say it like I see it, but you will, you will do that because I'm going to put a boldness and a confidence in you. and Not pride and arrogant, but bold and confident. And you're going to know who you are in me, and you're going to know when you open your mouth or when you lay hands, I'll, my spirit will flow to you and through you to bring many people to the kingdom and set many captives free. I release that in Jesus' name. James, I love you, man. Appreciate you. Okay. okay. Hey, they turn this back over to the pastor or to Eric or Okay, we'll get him straightened out. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, it's James's wife, Stephanie. She needs a double check. <laughs> <laughs> you could pull the work. Stephanie? You know, if I was a if I was a girl, I would gonna be Stephanie, but I was Stephen. <laughs> Father, I thank you. I'm, girl, I'm gonna tell you. You make a sound, not so much on the instrument, right here. But a sound is going to bring revival. Hey, and you know where revival needs to be? Not in the world. There are a lot of dead people in church, and you're going to bring life. I see you speaking life and healing, and God's going to begin to download some things into you, and you're going to take people and say, who is this person? We hear a lot of famous different people, Elevation, what's all that. God says, I'm going to make your name known. And, and you said, get some, he said, get some quiet time with me because you're going to write something for your own souls. You don't have to, you don't have to do nobody else's. Because I, I'm still creating. I'm still doing. And you're going to write. And, and guess what? It's going to launch your ministry. And it's not just going to be worship. But everything you do is an act of worship. He says, I love you. I love you. And and you guys will flow as a team, a mighty team. (laughs) Ooh. I see crowds, crowds of people, and they're worshiping and they're praising because what's coming out of you is a sound of heaven and a sound of glory. And how do you get there? You go there, spend time, download. I say earlier, Download, decode, then unload. That's what you're going to do. Because he's given you a great mind. Mind of Christ, but a great mind to discern. You've got a great gift of discerning there. What's of God, what's not of God. Sometimes you see some things that, man, they mean deliverance. <laughs> but you know what? You can sing it out and people get set free. Because God's going to use you in a tremendous way. Trust him. He said, man, I put, I put. I put my seal on you. I just see God sealing you. And from this day forward, you are never going to be the same. Because there's so much gifting and calling in there. The prophetic's there, the healing's there, the miracles there. And the worship. And it all, God says, I'm putting it all together. Like one big thing. It looks like, look like all these crazy things. How am I going to do that? And God says, I'm going to do it. You don't have to labor at it. You do have to do your part. Spend time with me, hear from me, and then you're going to have some radical stuff that comes from the throne that you're going to release. Many people are going to say, where did you get that from? It's my secret, me and God. (laughs) But you know what? He said the secret things belong to God, but that which he reveals belongs to us and our children forever. So God's going to reveal things to you. You're coming into some revelation that will bring not just your transformation. Many people will be transformed because of that anointing. It destroys yokes. It sets captives free. So, you and James, take the kingdom 
by force <laughs> and manifest it. You know what I say when the kingdom suffers violence? Where's the kingdom? In you. The violence is the enemy coming at you, but you have to be more violent than the violence that comes against you and say, get out of my way, devil. I'm taking it all down. Everything. You have the wealth anointing. You have the health anointing. You have the breakthrough anointing. You have so much. And God says, God says this, you're a rarity. But you're not alone. <laughs> but he, he made you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, I, I bless Stephanie, and I thank you for the gift to the body of Christ. I can even re receive right now, I feel your presence, kind of like almost boomeranging back on me. So that knock me drunk in this place. But I thank you, Lord. Many people are going to come and feel this presence and be raised up in the glory. I, I sense a glory cloud just wants to come in. <laughs> oh, Ooh, it's going to break loose. It's going to break loose. It's going to break loose in this house. It's going to break loose in this house. And Pastor Eric, you're going to carry it a lot of places. Get ready. You just start talking miracles. You're going to see a manifest. Yeah. More doors. Thank you for allowing us to serve you tonight. It's always an honor and a privilege to serve God's people. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm going to ask you just to be still for right now. You know, we have a, um, I already wrote out the check for the honorarium. But I, I feel this, and I'm telling you, it just, it's up to you, please. I hope you believe me, but I believe we need to just, besides what a rise man of God, if you would like to give the prophet something to tonight, um, can we have the receptacles? Um, I, 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 I hesitate because it's Pastor Angel's church, and I thank you, Pastor Angel, for, for permitting me. But I just really feel strongly in my heart, in my spirit, that when you, you know, we get a prophet's reward, but that's not about it. It's about blessing a man of God that has come over and, and have given everything that they have. It's their anniversary. And, and, bless me. and they came to bless us, to bless us. So I'm going to, you know, take just a few minutes. Um, if you, you know, just throw it in. Just put it in, you know, don't throw it in, okay? Just come up, and, and, and if you're not great, just, you know, just come up and bless the man of God. Because I, I just really feel in my heart, we already have it, but I, I feel this is your seed that's going to be sown into the prophet, the prophetic ministry. So, um, Stephanie, if you could uh, sing a song, praise God, but uh, just come on up. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Pastor, I'll just say if it's okay, Pastor Angel, uh, if you don't have cash, well, there's going to be a phone number on there. And it's, uh, where's the youth out here? We have, we have youth that know that number, and they say it all the time, praise God. It's a powerful church. So if you don't have cash or check and you want to... Put it under a rise man of God, and it will go to to this couple. So uh, I just really feel, and you know, if I'm wrong, forgive me. But uh, I just really feel that we should do that for the man of God. Good enough to be praised. God is. 
is too good not to be praised. Can you all stand God up? God is too good, yeah. God is too good not to be praised. God is too good, yeah. God is too good not to be praised. God, you're too good, yeah. God is too good not to be praised. God, you're too good, yeah. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for your word, Father, that come forth, Lord God. Dropped in our hearts, Father, richly, Lord. Purely, Lord God. We ask that you bless this, Father. That you bless every word that has come out of this prophet's mouth, Lord God. That it not return void, Father, but accomplish all that you purposed it to do in the people's lives, Lord. I pray, Father, right now for this money, Lord. Did it, Father, be more than enough, Lord God? Did he'll always, Father, have more than enough and never lacking in any good thing, Lord? So we ask this, Father, and we bless this as we raise this up before you, Lord God. That your will be done, Lord God. That the riches and the goodness of God, Father, would bless them all the days of their lives, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everyone said. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Angel. Praise God for Pastor Angel. You know, I did. Uh, we've been friends for almost two years now, right? And we're still friends, praise God. <laughs> Amen. If you got to know me, you know, it's like, okay, you're still friends. That's a miracle in itself. <laughs> Tomorrow, 9 o'clock, men of a higher standard, Pastor Mark Mendoza. It's going to be ministering the word. 
So men, come back. Invite some other men. Young men, get here tomorrow, 9 o'clock, because the word is going to continue to go forth. And the worship team minus the two anointed women of God. But Josh Rios will be here tomorrow. And uh, praise God. So, Father, we bless this time. We bless what you've done. We receive it in gladness. We know that you will confirm your word with signs following. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Praise God. Greet one another before you actually go home. Josie.